Hearing disorders range from a temporary parietal loss of hearing to total permanent hearing loss, known as deafness. Factors that can affect this loss of hearing also range from genetic conditions that cause deafness from birth or gradual worsness of deafness with age, to trauma or infection that can cause temporary or permanent hearing loss. Hearing disorders affect all race, age and gender categories, with more prevalence in ageing populations. Hearing aids are used by people hard of hearing to amplify sound, easing the clarity and or volume of sound for the person. For people who have total deafness, hearing aids won't be able to assist in hearing as the brain may not be able to receive and or translate the sound waves into noise, making this technology redundant for these people. Sounds are transmitted through the air. In a normal ear, sound waves cause the eardrum and the middle ear bones to vibrate. This sends a wave of vibrations into the inner ear or the cochlea. These waves are then converted by the cochlea into electrical signals, which are sent along the auditory nerve to the brain. A deaf person does not have a functioning inner ear. A cochlear implant tries to replace the function of the inner ear by turning sound into electrical energy. This energy can then be used to stimulate the cochlear nerve, sending sound signals to the brain. On the 1st of August 1978, Graham Clark's bionic ear invention was successfully implanted into its first deaf patient. Until this date, no bionic ear invention had successfully allowed a patient to understand speech. It was the first successful interface between electronics and the human nervous system. The cochlear implant consists of two technologies. One part of the device is surgically implanted into the bone surrounding the ear, or the temporal bone. It is made up of a receiver slash stimulator which accepts, decodes, and then sends an electrical signal to the brain. The second part of the cochlear implant is an external device. This is made up of a microphone or receiver, a speech processor, and an antenna. This part of the implant receives the sound, converts the sound into an electrical signal, and then sends it to the inside portion of the cochlear implant. Unlike hearing aids, where sound is amplified through the microphone to the ear canal, the cochlear implant does not aid hearing of sound to the ear. Instead, it bypasses the ear entirely, stimulating the auditory nerve. Hearing through a cochlear implant is relearning sound and is different from normal hearing. It can take patients many months to learn or relearn hearing through this technology. For some, this may never happen. Of course, as technology has improved since the invention of the bionic ear, the instance of people being totally unable to learn or relearn with the device is low, but for the deaf population this risk can amount to serious consideration before undergoing surgery. Cochlear implants since the year 2000 have been approved by multiple countries for usage on patients as young as 12 months old. Studies have shown that the period between 12 and 18 months is the most crucial for the development of speech, language skills and communication. Hello, my name is Sam. I'm deaf and hard of hearing. I'm oral and I started signing Auslan, Australian Sign Language, recently about three or four years ago. I grew up wearing hearing aids and I have a residual hearing loss, means LVAS, which has an extended name. So I've been asked to answer two questions, and the first is, have I been offered the option to have a cochlear implant? And yes, I have. People, my, pe people have asked me if I wanted to have a cochlear implant over time. So the short answer is yes, I've been asked many times by my audiologist and I've said no to all of them. The first time I said no because I was scared and the second time I said no because I realised I don't really need it.
I do love my hearing aids, which leads me to the second question. Assistive technology, how has that impacted the deaf community? Well, really, there's a positive and negative impact that assistive technology has had. Positive is that hearing aids and cochlear have provided many people with a hearing loss to speech and sound because of that assistive technology. Myself, well, I have hearing aids and I've had hearing aids ever since and it's always been positive. Um, I'm comfortable with them and I do receive sound quite well and I really appreciate my hearing aids a lot which has given me access to my family, to friends, to education and high school, everything. However, it's really important to understand that there is a negative impact. Supportive technology often encourages and promotes the belief that there is an issue that needing to be fixed and technology can do that. That attitude has impacted me personally. For example, I've grown up old, which has been fine for me, but when I started learning Auslan, it had a significant impact on my life. I was shocked at the full access I was receiving, and I was curious why, as a child, I could not have been given the option of being old and signing. So this topic is really, really complex, and there's no right or wrong answer. But the simple solution that I believe is why not provide both 